Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the man, the myth, the legend, born to kill. Before I get this started, this is going to be a pretty long video, if you couldn't tell by the, you know, fucking time display, but this video is going to be a little bit more serious, like all my videos have been recently, I apologize about that, but, you know, I feel like it's something that should be touched on more often, and that's what I'm here to do, because I think I got a pretty good understanding of what I'm going to be speaking about. Today I'm going to be speaking about actually my experience with the school system and my experience with school in general, people, and my life so far, basically. I know it might seem a little bit self-centered or whatever, but this is more to help because I know a lot of you guys are my age. Do You know, you're going through school, you're like, eh, life kind of fucking blows. But, um, you know, I wanted to give you a rundown of what happened with me and, you know, if what you're going through right now is better, worse, the same, or, you know, I just hope you can latch onto this and find a similar, you should know somebody else is going through what you're going through, man. That's all I really want from this video. I really hope you guys take something from it. But, you know, I started out in a small little town school. Not really that small, but not really that, you know, big. I was in the school till the fifth grade, you know. Depression wasn't really a thing. Puberty kind of didn't set in yet. I was there till fifth grade. And then I started another school living with my grandparents in sixth grade. Things went a bit south um, where I was going. So I moved up there. And life kind of switched. I evolved as a person. I thank God every day that I did. You know, I used to be very quiet. I used to keep to myself. And yeah, from time to time, I would always, you know, crack a joke, you know do some rebellious but I wasn't really that kid or that person anymore I changed because the kind of people that I was surrounded by were so not odd but so self-absorbed maybe and then there were so many different cliques and groups that you know I love to adore and make fun of you know you got the jocks or whatever which isn't really a thing anymore I don't think well they're obviously there but I think it's more of like the, you know, it's all a pyramid, you know, you got fucking emos, outcasts, and nerds on the bottom, then it goes to fucking the normals, you got the, the attractive ones, and then you got, you know, whatever's on the top for you, whatever that may be, I think it's all different for everyone, how clicks work in schools, but... During my 6th grade to 8th grade experience, you know, I was, you know, I was definitely going out of my shell. I was trying to be more social and stuff, and it really fucked me over because I did horrible in school. My 8th grade schooling experience was one of my worst. I was an asshole. Uh, me and the principal got in a lot of shit together. Fucking made a meme about you called Poe. Poe, fuck you, Jensen. I don't know what's watching this. But, he, you know, he had rights to do what he, some of the shit he did, you know. But a lot of it, you know, putting me in in-school suspension for doing petty little shit is kind of disgusting, if you ask me. But other than that, my freshman year was the worst and best year of my life. I started out, um, it was my 15th birthday in September, and I um, got in a relationship with this one girl. She's very near and dear to my heart. Um, but, you know, we're young, stupid, and dumb. Still, even being so old, but still so young, you know what I mean? We didn't know how to love. And that's okay, you know, you gotta learn somewhere. And, you know, we stayed together until that month was over. And, you know, we, we ended up breaking up, thank God. Because, you know, well, maybe not, I don't know. I'm not sure how to look at it right now. One of her friends, one of her best friend, moved in on my street, and that's how we reconnected. And this girl, the girl ended up breaking up with me. Understandable. <laughs> but me and her friend actually started uh, seeing each other. And, you know, this girl is my first quote-unquote true love or first love that really meant something to me. You know, me and her mother got along so well. I considered her her mother my mother and her father my father and her uncles and siblings part of my family. And, you know, I really did for that nine months. It was, things still sucked in school. I was still having a really hard time, you know. And 
we ended up breaking up because the first girl I mentioned, she messaged me one day saying, you know, I'm going to off myself and, you know, if you'd come see me, I might reconsider. Um, so I had no choice. If she ended her life, I couldn't live on. Not because of the loss of her, just knowing that I could do something about it. So I went and seen her. We talked for five minutes. One of the girls that I was currently with seen us together. And, you know, she's like, it's him, it's her or me. And, you know, I, I couldn't drop her. I couldn't risk the chance of losing someone that close. This girl has been with me for fifth gr since fifth grade. She, she helped me get through the change. And, you know, that summer went by. Nothing really happened. And then that next September, I um, was having a lot of trouble in school again. You know, I tried. I came in with a flannel, combed my hair. <laughs> and, you know, I thought things were going to be different. They weren't. And then I got admitted, admitted, hospitalized, whatever the fuck you want to call it, into partial. And uh, just a quick thank you to all, all the people in partial. You know, all the nurses, all the doctors, and there are no doctors, um, uh, therapists, everyone there changed my life, and I really want to thank you for that. You made me into the person I wanted to be, but still hate. <laughs> but after partial, I went back to the school for a total of seven days. The first two were transition days, and then the next week, um, you know, I was doing my best, getting my work around, because I've been out of school for a month and I was trying to get my back on my feet and you know I reconnected with an old study hall teacher and we talked for a while and we got all my work around and you know teachers were still treating me pretty bad you know I was a couple seconds late to math this one time and um fucking uh, this sh fucking opens the door it was locked and she's like Ben you're late go to fucking in school suspension I'm like what the fuck, dude? I got all my work. There's still kids on their phones before the fucking class began. I just felt really disconnected at that point. You know, I went around on a fucking rampage. It, it just hurt, you know? I didn't know what to do. But this opportunity arose was an opportunity. It was more of a fucking death sentence. Uh, there's this suspension place known as the Red House across the, the way from the school. And, you know, they sent me there, and from that point forward, I couldn't go on the daily commute. You know, I couldn't go around seeing teachers or friends every morning. And that was a big part of my day. I'd always do that. I'd always greet my friends, be like, hey, guys, I'm going to try to get you to laugh or whatever. I couldn't do that anymore. They treated me like a suspended student. I had to get escorted around the school and get put on the bus to the place. And, you know, I'm really glad I had uh, Jenna for that. I'm sorry for saying your name. I know you will never watch this. And I'm not speaking about the one from Partial, but I love you too, Jenna. You're great. <laughs> um, you know, she helped me a lot through it. And, you know, I thank her for what she did. She was another girl I was with when I was in Partial, which was for six months. Yeah, funny. They said it was temporary, and I ended up staying there for six months, which they never sent me work. And the work that I got, that I finished, they, I don't think they looked at. I think they all filed it away somewhere something it might be a fucking conspiracy who knows but I'm so glad that I went there I met a man he wore a bun he had long hair he's a great guy most incredible man I will ever meet on my life not in my life and I know that he changed the my view upon things you know I went there I only had to stay there for half the day I could leave at 1130 if I wanted to and I did for the first couple of weeks but then I'm like, I need to stay here all day. If they're not going to send me fucking work, why do I even show up? I'm going to stay here all fucking day. And you know you know what you might think, Ben? Why would you do that? The kids that went there, they got suspended, were there because they were broken or just fucking stupid, which a lot of them were. But then you got that one kid that was there because they go home to nothing. They go home to abuse. They go home to fucking self-hatred. And, you know, that shit comes into school every day with you. You can't learn with that shit going on in your head. So I would sit down with the kids that were like, I'm not doing this shit. I'm not fucking, I'm not going to sit here and fucking let you control me, you know. I sat down with them and I talked to them and, you know, a lot of times they were successful. Sometimes they weren't. And, you know, I only got them for a period of time until they were unsuspended. But I really think I might have helped someone. And that makes me feel great every day. 
you know, <sighs> there was this one girl that came there for the same thing I did, anxiety. She was placed in there because they didn't know what to do with her. She came at 10 o'clock because she got to do classes, unlike me. And her name was Laura, if you don't mind me saying that. Laura, I'm sorry. Um, she was a wonderful person. She, you know, she had a dark past as well. And, you know, I kind of tried to help her. I tried to be her therapist, and we bonded a lot. I tried to help her during her panic attacks. And, you know, we made out good. I'm really glad I got to meet you. You changed my life forever. You're a great person. And then she ended up leaving around late December, maybe. And, you know, it's kind of alone. There was a guy there for, he was going there for a year. He whipped somebody with a belt. I'm not going to disclose his name because, yeah. But it was one of the principal's sons. And I fucking hate this bitch. Let me tell you something. You watching this, you slimy fucking cunt? <laughs> but he was a great great guy he was, did it for a stupid reason he had no reason to do it but he's so insightful so fucking intelligent some of the shit this kid said I was fucking dumbfounded by it was fantastic there okay <laughs> I got sent to a thing around fucking was it February February is when I finally got out of the red house the temporary wait they said took six months I went to this place in Williamson. You probably don't know. I have a fucking clue what I'm talking about. But it took me 45 minutes to get there every day. And I went there, and it was a little, like an 811 program. And there was a fucking bunch of dicks in there. They were dicks. I don't have a lot of time there. I only went there for 10 days, I believe. The teacher was a fucking cool guy. You know. It sucked, but it was good. I met some cool people. And I'm really glad. It's upset that I didn't get to say goodbye to them. You know, the last day I stepped off the bus, you know feeling good, you know, and I get the word that my mom got custody of me, so I make a run for it, not like a fifth, you fucking see me running, I'll give you a fucking quarter, <laughs> and I met up with the first girl in the story, and, you know, we walked around town for a while, and my mom rang us, and, you know, I felt bad, she fucking, she made me give up again, which I shouldn't have, I should have just kept going, you know, but, you know, I get back to the house, you know, and I start heading off to my new place, which isn't new. It's where I started, where I went from first grade to fifth, and I'm back. I'm there again, and, you know, I'm in the same 811 program. But, you know, with something like that, I believe that all the kids in there become brothers and sisters of segregation or something like that. I feel like it's already making you bond. You know, some kids are there for learning disabilities. Some kids are there for attention issues, issues with other people, like put it, keeping their hands off people, you know, and emotional reasons. I, that's why I'm there. But when you come into a place like that and you're ridiculed because your hair is long, you're apparently a homosexual, which I don't give a fuck if you are or not. It doesn't fucking matter. If you're fucking a guy down the street, it does not affect me whatsoever. Gay people are fucking awesome, by the way. And, you know, it's not the fact that I cared that he was calling me gay. It's the fact that he was using gay as a negative term. That fucking pissed me off. And trust me, if I wasn't on this IEP fucking shit, he would be a fucking... Less of a man than he was when he before he fucking called me gay. Let me tell you what. I hope you're watching this, you fucking scumball. You know, I went in there thinking this, cool, this guy was going to be a cool motherfucker. But no. And I don't know what I did. To deserve the fucking disrespect, you know we're all we're all in this together, man. You don't have to fucking treat me less than you, and you don't have to treat this person less than you. We're all fucking equals here. We're all in here, and we all want to get out. That's a bond that that should bind us, not rip us apart. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm just, you know. When I was in Canada, well, in my school, in the high school, you know, I was ridiculed by teachers because I'm creepy. I don't know. I, I understand. I, I've, I've got long hair and I like edgy music. But that's no reason to fucking label me as fucking creepy. I got a referral one day saying how fucking creepy I was and all the kids saying how fucking creepy I was. 
that night I attempted to take my own life, and you know what? Honestly, I wish, if, you know, I don't want to say that, but I did, and it was, I was sick of it. I was sick of the disrespect I was getting. I walked into a math class to fucking check my grades because I wasn't getting any fucking work. And I go in there, and I don't know how to start a fucking conversation, because why would I? I'm a fucking... Give me a class on social speaking, maybe we could fucking talk then. But I was fucking... judged. For what fucking reason? I do not know. It was the beginning of the day I had ever right to be in that fucking room. And that's... It's not right, because people are so judgmental for no fucking reason. You know, I don't care if you think you're better than everyone else. I don't care if you think you're better than me. But just fucking keep a level head when you're talking to me. Don't fucking judge somebody before you fucking hear their voice, you know. People may look dirty, clean, unhealthy, or just fucking torn, ripped, broken. But that doesn't mean they're less than you. That doesn't mean anything at all. Somebody's heart could be the biggest fucking thing in the world. They could care so much. But the outside, you know, they might have tattoos. They might fucking, you know, do something that's edgy or whatever. I don't know. But fucking stop judging people, man. You know, there's no reason to do it. We're all just people trying to get by. I hope this helps somebody. I doubt it. If you didn't hear that, I'm, I'm using old footage because I'm fucking homeless. Um, <laughs> but I really hope this helps somebody. You know, even if it just helped one person, I'm doing what I'm here to do. You know, sorry for the lack of videos. I've been really down. But this is helping me a lot. And I want to thank you guys for giving me a voice when I feel like society has, you know, shunned me from using my voice. And... You know, if you're struggling out there and you don't have somebody to talk to, I'm always here. You know, you know how to get a hold of me. You know how to DM me, YouTube comments. I will talk to you. I know a faceless, freak, creepy student isn't really going to help you through this slump of yours. But you're stronger than you think you are. I love you all so much. Thank you for the support. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Be the bigger man. Be be somebody you want to be. Don't hate because you hate you. Love because you hate you. Goodbye, you fucking gay lore. <laughs>